special month-long exhibit here at the Borgia Gallery at Elms College addresses mental health issues. The artwork is by the late Northampton artist Genevieve May Burnett, who struggled with lifelong schizophrenia and died in 2015 at the age of 70. Julie Bollier has our story. I knew that I wanted to show Genevieve's work before I even started working here at Elms College. Despite battling schizophrenia since childhood, Barnett created amazing artwork throughout her life. She died in 2015 at age 70. Her intellectual property is in care of the Anchor House of Artists, and this exhibit is part of that collection. Our professionals and students alike have viewed Borgia Gallery's display of Genevieve May Burnett, coming away from the exhibit both inspired by the works and empathizing with those affected by mental illness. I really enjoyed the exhibit. There was like two paintings in particular. There was one of like a regular hospital scene and then like a or a hospital bed and then like a schizophrenic bed. And I could like it almost seemed as if she was trying to paint how she felt. And that was like one piece that really stuck out to me. And I just think um, it was interesting because I feel like her paintings were her way of coping with her mental illness. The founding director of Anchor House says he decided to open the doors of his own art studio 20 years ago to local artists struggling with mental illness. I first met Genevieve uh, when I was working in a mental health job. I've worked several mental health jobs as a, uh, over the years. I've worked as a crisis clinician and uh, the director of a, a day rehabilitation program. And I think uh, it was one of those where I first met her and uh, just got to know her better and better. Uh, and I got to know of her uh, as an artist. She was a very incredible artist and she had very brilliant things to say and uh, she'd even I'd ask her for comments on my you know a, a painting that I might have going and she'd have always right spot-on advice. Burnett's painting spoke to people. Viewers say that not all of her artwork is sad or distorted. Some of friends and of her favorite pet, Mike the Cat, are full of life and happiness. One important relationship to her uh, was an, a man by the name of Roderick Freeman. He was uh, initially uh, uh, a man that she met and they became boyfriend and girlfriend. In this show, we have an example. Uh, we have an example of a portrait that she did of him. And we also have uh, blown up a journal entry from her notebooks where she had uh, made a drawing uh, from a photograph of, uh, of Roddy. And in the, the drawing, she used the drawing as a, a study for the painting. So you'll see uh, here in the show that relationship from what she would take from uh, her uh, studies uh, into, uh, uh, into the painting. And so you can get a, a glance at how this woman just wasn't just painting, she was thinking and developing paintings. From friends to felines, Burnett's subjects were varied, not always serious, sometimes even whimsical. We have a whole series of Mike paintings, which Mike was Genevieve's cat. And so this was a subject that I think is something we can all relate to. So many of us have pets and we understand, you know, the kind of unconditional love of an animal, but it also shows this really bright spot um, and this constant part of her daily life. But also it, it shows that, you know, that wonderful uh, humanity um, and the personality within her that we might overlook if we just first approach her as a person with mental illness. Along with Burnett's exhibit, Elms College will host a colloquium on art and mental health coming up on March 23rd. There's many questions that have to do with mental health um, and creativity. Um, I think we just lumped together in the 50s uh, people that were different and weren't normal. And uh, we, we wanted to get away, just put them away in some ways and, and uh, not be embarrassed by them. And, and of course, that's a great disservice, a great injustice. 
to the human condition. In fact, Genevieve Burnett was schooled with students who had developmental delays, autism, and Down syndrome, when she had nothing wrong with her intellectually. She later spent much time in and out of the former Northampton State Hospital. In her mid-60s, she suffered a broken hip and remained in a skilled nursing facility until she passed away from lung cancer. I'm Julie Boyer reporting for Real to Real.